Hi everyone, this is Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple. And this is the last video of my series talking about undeposited funds. And today we're going to concentrate on the sales receipt workflow when we are talking about undeposited funds. Now, before we actually dive in, I ask that if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel, share it with others, and at the very minimum, please click on the notification bell, so that way you'll get notified of all the new videos and content that I put out. My channel is mostly geared toward accountant users, but I'm finding here recently that I'm getting a lot of small business owners, especially brand new people starting out in their businesses, seeking me out. And I welcome all of you who want to be a part of my family. Now, with that said, again, I'm in the Kathy Bookkeeping test file. I'm in the bank transaction screen. And what I did before I actually started the video is I created a couple of sales receipts because we're gonna go into at least one of them so you can see how it is basically set up. And then I wanna show you how the undeposited funds process works when you're trying to add or match them in QuickBooks Online. So let's go over here to the magnifying glass icon and that way I can show you the sales receipt that I entered. I'm gonna actually show you the one that I entered most recently for bowls and teriyaki. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one right here because this is the most recent one that was sent out and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there so that way you can see. Now this is a sales receipt and I entered it basically by going into the left navigation under the plus new button and I entered it that way. So that way I went ahead, as you can see, I've got the client, the email, the billing address populated in there. The sales receipt date is actually 4-4-2025 and that payment was by check and I went ahead and put the check number in there. But, and then as I scroll down, you can see that the service date is actually stated as 4-1-2025 and then the product and services showing for bookkeeping services. And don't worry about the product and service category. That really needs to be updated. But just for the purpose of what we're doing here, that's the product and service that I have it coded under. And the description is monthly bookkeeping services for April 2025, which I charged a rate of $500 for that. And so, but I want you to notice where the deposit is pointing to. It's, in, it's pointing to that undeposited funds category. If you watched any of the videos in the past, you'll know that undeposited funds is basically a temporary holding area where funds go. If you receive checks or cash or anything like that, and you haven't taken them to the bank yet, then that's where you want to park those funds. And this mimics the actual workflow as if you are going to the bank or using a mobile deposit device to deposit those funds. So you don't want to put those directly into whatever checking or savings account that you have those going into because you have to do the additional step of making the actual deposit. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this and that'll bring us back, hopefully to our bank transaction screen in which it does. And now one of the things that you can do here is you can actually go in and, and, and make the deposit here if you have several of them that you're grouping together. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this, use the hamburger button or the three line button to get back in here and click on the plus new. So if you go down here, this is where you actually would create the sales receipt if you were wanting to do it. You can also do it from the customer record, which will make it a little bit easier because it will auto populate whatever customer that, that you're seeking out or using at that time. But here we go under bank deposit. And if we go under bank deposit, you want to make sure, first of all, that your LGE checking or whatever, the account that it's actually going into is the one here because you can actually switch this. And this is actually a sticky setting. And since most all of my deposits are going into this LGE checking account, I leave that as my default. Now you can see that we have two different transactions here. One is another sales receipt that I didn't put a reference number in there. I forgot to do that as part of the workflow that we're doing here or the demonstration that we're doing here. Normally I would do that. I just forgot to do it for this one. 
but we have the $500 one that we just created. And then this is an older one for $500. Now, if these came through the bank feeds together, then we can actually group these and it will match to whatever's in the banking center or the bank transactions window. But since these are actually coming through separately, then we can do something a little different and it'll save you a little bit of time as we're doing this. So you don't need, and this is actually kind of skipping this step, but it's not really skipping this step. If you'll follow along with me, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of this. Okay. So going through the banking center, I'm going to close out this left navigation since we don't need it anymore. I'm going to go down here to this transaction from 4-4-2025. And it's saying that there's two matches found. And so I'm going to open up that transaction here and scroll down just a little bit. And you can see that it's pointing to both of those sales receipts. So something that you want to know is that when... QuickBooks suggests a match in the banking center. It can go back, I believe, up to 90 days to try to find the match. And if you have something relatively close to that, it'll try to suggest mostly the oldest match first. So generally, you want to make sure that it's matching to the right thing before you actually go in there and match. And of course, in this case, I know that this is incorrect. It, this actually from the 4-4 date here. Oops. and From, from the 4-4 date here. It actually matches to this sales receipt that I showed you just a little while ago. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that to accept that. And then what this is going to do is this is going to match the sales receipt that I just showed you to the entry into the QuickBooks Online for Review Banking transaction. So when I do that, that's going to go away. And then now if we scroll down here to the bottom, you can see that this match actually is matching to the right transaction. But before we actually accept that, I want to show you something so that way you can see why I did it this way. So we go back to that bank deposit here. Remember clicking on the plus new and going to other bank deposit. So you can see that the 4-4 dated sales receipt is gone. And all that's left here is the 3 24 2025 Now, we could have did that bank deposit, and it would have matched to a technical bank deposit transaction, but that's kind of an extraneous step at this point. So you don't even have to do that step, because when you actually go through here, and we're going to go back down. Let me close that left navigation out again. You go back down here to where it says match, and you always want to double-check, especially when you have amounts that are similar and stuff like that to make sure it's matching to the correct item that you're trying to match up. So in this case, we know that this is the sales receipt that this matches up to. You can always click onto that and look at, and let's actually do that because I do want to add, let's say we forgot to add the check number and you can do it from here. I'm going to say it was three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Of course, that's a fictitious check number. So I'm going to go ahead and, and this was actually for some special training that they engaged for us for. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And we can go back down here and look at that match and you can see that it's got the information in there for that, that uh, information that we put in there. And I'm going to go ahead and click on match and then that takes that away. And it's in the for review section. I'm not even going to go in the for review or the categorize section. I mean, so let's go back to the left navigation, click on plus new, go back to bank deposit. And you don't, you shouldn't see anything in there for that particular account anymore. Even if we was to go to LG checking, there's nothing in there because that took care of what we needed to do. So hopefully, you know, we're not going to create a transaction. We're going to leave without saving. So hopefully this will help you today and this ends my series on the categorized funds and I'm going to actually do the uh, links to all the videos in the description. So hopefully if you missed any of them, you'll be able to watch them. So anyway, I hope this helps you all take care. Have a wonderful day and we will see you very soon.